Guys, today we're going to look at three foldable solar panels I've bought over the years. Um, this is a Milliard 14 watt panel I got off Amazon on sale a couple years ago for like 20 bucks. I bought a bunch of my family members the same one. Um, I think it's like $40 now. Um, this is a 40 watt power add panel. I don't think they sell this one anymore, but we'll look at it anyway. I think I got it for like 60 bucks like two years ago. And then this is the most recent addition, um, uh, Yolk Solar Paper Foldable Panel. Um, these retail, this with this many panels, this one retails for uh, almost $300. Uh, but I picked this one up off Craigslist used for $100. Um, and then we've got two USB power meters, and we're going to be charging a uh, 1500 milliamp hour battery pack. It's at 64% for our uh, power readings. Here's a shot of all the panels open so you can get an idea of their relative sizes compared to each other. Uh, obviously the 40 watts, the largest, the 14 watts bigger than the 10 watt, but uh, the 10 watts not that much. Well, I mean, they're a lot larger than the 10 watt, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, the solar paper one has magnets and can separate. It has two little solder pads on the back that I don't think you would ever use. Um, and it actually functions independent. So each square you add is more power, but you can just charge with just the uh, control box one. Um, and then it has two USB ports on the end. Uh, NA is non-Apple, A is for Apple, genius. Um, the 40 watt power add panel has one USB port and one barrel uh, plug. That actually puts out, I think, 19 volts, and then it came with uh, a barrel plug, and then it, it did come with a whole strip of adapters for the end of this to presumably charge it laptop with it. But uh, I, I don't actually have a laptop that uses barrel adapters, so I, I haven't actually tried that. But I, I believe it's 19 volts on output, but uh, that's not important for our test today since we're just testing USB charging. Um, and then the Milliard has two USB ports um, and you can see the little red LEDs on just from the ambient light in the room but obviously that wouldn't charge anything and then you can see uh, how thick they are they're pretty thin and light but obviously much larger than the solar paper but these uh, can't come apart and obviously the solar paper with the magnets they'll hold the weight but uh, and give it a, sh a good shake it'll fall apart and uh, actually when it's when it's on the ground these gaps between the panel blades of grass can come through and um, it's just so small that anything you prop it up on kind of can shade it and these ones being in a continuous surface is a little better because then nothing's really on them to shade them but uh, We'll take a look at them outside and we'll uh, we'll open each one, one panel at a time, and see how they perform compared to each other. So we've got our test set up here. It's a nice sunny day. Uh, we've got our power bank hooked up through a USB Type-C cable. And then we've got our little power meter here. Um, and the solar paper is functioning just off the, the base unit with the actual USB hookup. Uh, so with just that, we're getting 4.55 volts, uh, 340 milliamps. If we go ahead and add another segment, we're at 0 0.67 amps, 0 0.98, and then add the fourth one, uh, 1.29. You can see it there. That. Going to hook up to the milliard. Get it hooked up. Uh, so we're just going to open it one panel at a time. There's one. Give it time to start charging. Okay. 4.55 volts, 330 milliamps. Two. 
seven. The last two to one point two amps. So a size comparison there. This is a bit more efficient, I'd say. And then we'll move on to our last one here. This is the power add 40 watt panel. And this one actually doesn't power on the USB converter until the entire panel is unfurled. You can see how much larger it is than the other two. And we're getting 4.9 volts at 2.2 amps. So far outperforms the other ones. But, uh, see how it functions when you shade a bit of the panel. Yeah, it, it can't handle that. So, it looks like uh, most of the panel, if not the entire panel, has to be uh, unshaded for the, the thing to function, which is kind of a uh, negative for me. Now I've got all three panels down in the shade of the truck to simulate tree shade. Uh, the sun is high in the sky. It's very bright out here today. Um, so the milliard in the shade is only producing basically nothing. 4.5 volts, 0 0.05 amps. So it does not work fully shaded. Power add. not even powering on the meter. The light is off. At least the milliard lights up to indicate it is receiving power. Um, and the solar paper is it's not even turning on. So it does not work in the shade either. Uh, so all three panels obviously need some amount of direct sunlight and can't be fully shaded to function. Well, I was just about to pick everything up, but I hooked this back up again. We are actually charging in the shade with the power add, 170 milliamps. So, that's something. Let's double check and move it further away from the sunlight edge. Yeah, still make 130 milliamps in the shade. So there you go. One final note about the solar paper, just something I found pretty annoying. Because it is so thin when you do lay it on the ground, grass actually casts a shadow on it. It decreases your output a little bit. And some blades of grass can poke up through these uh, little divisions between the panels and shade little cells as well. Also, it seems during the testing that the uh, solar paper might have overheated because the output's dropped down to 360 milliamps now, even with all the panels connected.